The way Umberto Morales remembers it, the whole thing started innocently enough. It was an early Sunday evening in Springfield, and he was standing in a driveway on North Cloverleaf Loop, chatting with his ex-wife's uncle. Umberto asked how things were going. And he said, oh, you know, same old, same old, drama, drama, drama. And I said, oh, tons of fun over there, huh? At that exact moment, another resident in the duplex walked by and overheard him. According to Umberto, she took his tons of fun remark personally. And she told him that uh, she oughta, he ought to have some respect for her, and he wasn't even talking to her. That's David Garrett, Umberto's ex-uncle. He says the woman in question, whose name is Kelly Baker Alton, started the whole thing. At some point, Kelly's boyfriend, a young man named Brandon Reed, came onto the scene. And he pulls out a knife and says, I'm going to shank you. He shoves me into his girlfriend, and she holds me from behind, saying, I got him, baby. Kill this f***ing wetback. By then, neighbors were flocking to the commotion. Screaming at the top of her lungs, and um, they're talking about, stab him and, and, uh, and kill him. I know I got free enough to try and block the knife, which is where I caught it in my thumb. He said after that, things became a blur. All he knows for sure is that he and Brandon ended up in the street with Umberto on top. And next thing I know, I see the guy stab Umberto several times in the back, and I said, oh, hell no, this ain't happening. By the time Garrett and a neighbor broke up the fight, Umberto had been stabbed at least 12 times, and he was cut four times in the face. He came up basically saying, I f***ing hate disabled people are flipping us off. And he says he had gay people. He says he had gay people who deserve to die and they have no rights. On my uncle's case, so I took offense to that too. It's kind of cold out there anyways. Meet the opposing team, Kelly Baker Alton and Brandon Reed. In their version of the story, they were being illegally evicted from the duplex when Humberto verbally attacked them out of the blue. Brandon, who has autism, admits he called Umberto a wetback, but says it wasn't used as a racial slur. I was using the legal definition, a Mexican that has no proper authority to be in the United States. For the record, Umberto was born in San Francisco, and he says Reed should be prosecuted for sending him to the hospital for dozens of stitches. As it was, the Springfield police questioned Reed, then let him go that same night without any charges. There, there you have it. It's cleared away. Left to sort out everything is Detective David Lewis, who supervised the investigation. First of all, he says it's perfectly legal for two people to fight. Well, basically the rules are if two adults decide they want to go out in the street and fight, I mean, that's mutual combat. They can fight. But in this case, he says, the question revolves around Brandon's autism and smaller size. There was a serious issue of the possibility of self-defense and or whether someone had the capacity to realize what they were doing. But that doesn't hold any water with Umberto and his neighbors. All I could say was, well, so do my nephews. They have autism and ADHD. But they know the difference between right and wrong and why you shouldn't stab somebody. And there's somebody in this mindset that walks around on our streets doesn't make me feel safe. The case was submitted to the Lane County District Attorney's Office on September 22nd. So far, no decisions have been made. I just want to know why he's free. I'm not afraid of him. I bought a taser last, uh, a couple days ago.